<laughs> that was the only person that'll say, don't say something right before the podcast. Stop. Knowing we to can us. <laughs> to us. <laughs> you can't say that to <laughs> us. <laughs> Charlamagne the God. Andrew Show. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of Brilliant Idiots. This week's podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. Tailor to your brand of business and optimize for every device. Easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all on your terms. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's start the show. Alex is here. Yep. Hezekiah Walker is here. Who else is here? T. Diddy. T. Diddy in the building. Girl ain't nowhere. Go nowhere. I got my baby oil rubbing down with it. T. Diddy. <laughs> Yo, nobody want to be T. Diddy no more. Yeah, Remember why when you used to be T. Diddy? You used to love why that name. Why did you change your name from T. Diddy? You used to love T. Diddy. I didn't. Yes, you did. I didn't you did. That was your Instagram name. I did, yeah, I just went with it. Wow. Oh. Because I was so all many... in the camera, all in the videos. Oh. That's why. Uh, Turning this pot into a freak. But are you all in the indictments? <laughs> <laughs> are you all in the indictments? That's Taylor? crazy, that picture right there. I go to the Super Bowl. I don't even you, know if I, I can. Tony has a better picture. Look at his hand. Look at his fist. <laughs> why he got a fist on? Who's nah, fighting it, it, naked it, it, like no, that? It, is it, seems like, it just seems like it's weird when stuff like this happens because then you start to look at everything and everything looks like what he's being. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, shit, like, I already got an idea for a Tubi movie. Oh, what like, is it? Like, imagine it being dark. And you just, yeah. No, let me do the glass. Let me do the glass. Let me do the, glass. the glass, the glass. Oh, yeah. Okay. Bad okay. Bad boys come, come out, out as gay. <laughs> come on, T. Diddy. T. Diddy, don't leave us. What? Don't Do leave want? us. My name is not that. Your name? Oh, now you ain't. Nobody want to be T. Diddy no one. Nobody want to be T. Diddy. I've been retired there that was so a long many time ago. There people that wanted to be Diddy at any city. That's true. Now... Son. I literally She's retired. Just like that. Diddy too. First it was fun size T, then it was T Diddy. You changed you your names and everything. Names, yo. Yo. You got mad names, Tay Tay. Tay Tay. It is. <laughs> we should call you Love. I know. Tay Tay. Tay Tay. It's T Love now. It's T Love. Love. T Love, man. Love Taylor. Um, love. How was your week? I saw you out in Vegas. Man, that Vegas weekend we had was... Kick your ass. Um, you, what, what, was I, plus, what was I doing when you walked in here? Sleeping. Yeah. You 40 plus. You do know that, right? Man, that shit was amazing, though. <laughs> I mean, I got to pay for it. I'm, like, sick. I mean, it's, I'm exhausted. I haven't said But those, those two days that we went for to Vegas were absolutely phenomenal. You did a show? It's incredible. We did a show. Uh, Fountain Blue on Friday. Amazing hotel, by okay. the way. And then Sari went to see the Sphere, the UFC Sphere. That shit is haven't incredible. haven't been inside of it. We got to go to that. And I mean that sincerely. Okay. Pick, let's pick a fucking show. I don't care what it is. You walk in, you see it, your brain can't really wrap, uh, it's, you, you can't really wrap your brain around what is happening. What is it? Like, what is, like, is it like virtual reality? Or? It's basically this, this massive dome. There's 18,000 people that are in it, but the screens completely wrap, it wraps the outside, but also the inside. Okay. So you're completely immersed in the environment. And then what they do is bands or even movies create these immersive environments and Everything's coming at you in 3D, but it's also wrapped around you. Wow. I'm telling you, bro, we just got to pick so a fucking So when you watch DJ the fight, the fight is around you too? Well, we were so close, I didn't even notice where the fight was. <laughs> I mean, the fight was just right in front of me. But, uh, you know what I mean? Did, did he, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it just feels that. like you're surrounded. No, no, no. But yes, the fight was, they, they basically project these screens, but in between the fights, they would do these little vignettes, these little like movies about Mexican heritage. And it was just mind bending. What did the Mexicans have to do with anything? Mexican Independence Weekend. Oh, I thought they built the spirit, so they were just showing them. They got to show them a little love. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, great job with this. Y'all get a weekend. Was the fights good? Uh, the last 
but not good. The rest were that we were there were fucking wars. It was amazing. I saw you hanging out with Shaq. Yo, Shaq's the man. That was just crazy. Hung out fifth. <laughs> saw y'all with fifth. Fifth and Tony Yayo is so funny that those two dudes are just hilarious, bro. It's they, like, yeah, they're just great. They go back and forth with each other. Yeah, they're just funny. Like, it's like usually I, I notice a lot of people, like celebrities and shit like that, they're like so insecure that like you know, they can't let loose. They can't be silly yeah, at all. Yeah, like, yeah. They're, they're so concerned what people think of them. 50's hilarious. Bro. They, Yale is, is ha hilarious. Dude. And happy to be here. And they, and they they're just making fun of each other. Like, they're, like, calling out memes and shit while they're doing it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. one person teasing the other. The other was like, why are you saying fuck me for? <laughs> like, 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 and we're all kind of, like, witnessing this shit. A lot of Diddy Banner? Say what? A lot of Diddy Nah, because it didn't come out oh, it until. Didn't yeah, 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 I yeah, imagine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it would have been a field day. But yeah, you, <laughs> we got to go check out the sphere, bro. Like, I I'm telling you. I was supposed to be in Vegas this weekend. Why didn't you go? Because uh, I got to be in New Orleans. Because uh, it's the IR Festival this weekend, which is in Vegas every year. Uh -huh. But I'm in New Orleans uh, Friday. For I'll book? Be at, yeah, I'll be at Xavier University at 10 a.m. Then I'll be at uh, Baldwell and Company Books at 7 30 p.m. And I was going to fly to Vegas Saturday, but I'm just going to stay in New Orleans. With the wife. Bro, could you go to the Sphere? Is there a Sphere show Saturday? I don't know. Go to... Go. I, might, I might. I might. I might still go to... Bro, the I, I just... It's it's like that. I saw y'all walk in. I thought y'all was looking up at the sky. That, this is how crazy it is, and it's the only way I've been able to describe it. What you're seeing on the screen is so perplexing, and the size of it is so huge. Like, your brain can't really manage the fact that everything you see is a screen. Yeah. I started to think the real fighters in the cage were fake. Damn. Like, my brain was like, oh, all this must be animation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that, makes, nah, that sense. makes sense. It's confusing, but. That makes sense. Diddy would pay to watch porn in the whole spear. Oh, my Just God. Just play the fucking porn would. throughout the whole goddamn spear. What type of porn do you think it would be? <laughs> Why are you laughing over there, T. Diddy? T. Diddy? Yo. What are you laughing at, T. Dan, Diddy? Dan, 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 dan. <laughs> <laughs> you would used to play that shit? You would. Oh, every time you used to pop up on a podcast, you would play this shit. Uh, we were, the North remembers. The, <laughs> okay. I'm going to call you Andy, and I'm going to call you, what was your name, Vos? What was your... I, whatever my name was, it wasn't Diddy. <laughs> hey, you can call me Andy. I think Andy is even close to that we're talking about. <laughs> well, not the, Allegedly. Yeah. No, he hasn't been accused of that. Yeah. He hasn't. No, yes, he has. Cassie oh, accused him. All right, me. bleep me. Sex I'm trafficker. I'm indictment. There you go. He's a sex trafficker. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it plays That's out, That's the man. worst trafficker. It's interesting because I've been to, like, I, I got, I had a, I got a lawyer friend and the lawyer friend said, I'll tell you exactly what they said because they texted it to me. Because, you know, when I read it, I'm reading it and it's just entertaining, right? It's like, damn, right? But, for, uh, from a legal perspective, he's like, <laughs> it's not a good indictment and lacks specific. What's the word? Specific. No, let him do it. Go. It's not a good indictment and lacks specificity. 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 S P E C I F I C I T Y. I your list kind of went away. You think so? I'm being dead serious. Really? You would never have been able to say specificity, specificity. five years ago. <laughs> I could barely say it. But you. <laughs> but. He said, yeah, it's, a, it's not a good indictment and lacks specificity, blah, blah, blah. but the nigga was a wild boy and kept the tapes. <laughs> yeah, did he's a, but, okay, so do you think that he's a, uh, it's like a blackmail operation, some Epstein shit, where he's basically getting people in there, people in power positions, putting them in compromised positions, videotaping them, and making sure they do things for him. Well, if you read the indictment, that's what the, that's what they're saying he was doing with the tapes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, he's, yeah. and do you think he's a fed? Do you think he was working with an organization? I really have no idea, man. I don't know what to think. Yeah, but we're brilliant idiots, so like, let's just cook. I really don't have a theory on this shit other than he's a freaky ass motherfucker, yo. A freaky ass motherfucker who, this, this is how I really feel, right? Other uh -huh. than him just being a freak. I I don't know how you get in that position and do all of this wild shit. It just leads me to believe you don't have no real friends around you. Well, because if you're worth a billion dollars and you're the guy that has all of these different people employed, like literally you're the reason all of this stuff is happening. All of these people have jobs. You mean to tell me not one person says, bro, you got to stop fucking around with all these drugs. Bro, you got to stop fucking around with all this alcohol. Bro, you need to stop fucking around with all these girls. Bro, stop it with the prostitutes. Why do you have guns in the house with the serial number scratched off? Like, nobody, he probably not has one person comes around and says, what the fuck are you doing? Mm. You want to lose it all? 
Yeah, no, that's a good point. Like, so like, it's either arrogance. This is th this is why I asked if he's a fed. He's either arrogant to the point where it's like nobody will catch me, or three things. He's got enough evidence on so many other people that they're like, well, if I go, he's like, if I go down, then they all go down, so they're not going to come to me. Or he's already cooperating with the feds and has been, or not even the feds, the CIA, FBI, whatever the fuck it is. So he's like. I'm in with them. They're going to protect me because I'm getting all the blackmail and blackmail information on all these people for them. So I be, because like when Russell Simmons, you know, was <laughs> all those women or whatever and allegedly. They, allegedly, he knew he was doing it and that's why he got the fuck up out of here and went to Bali. Also, you can only go to that's Bali. That's not true though. Charlotte, I'm going to fucking go crazy. It's not though we say I don't reason I want to say that cuz people that's saying stuff like that is very liable. He never had any criminal charges. Mm. He always was living in Bali. He always was building his resort in Bali. He has a whole wellness retreat in Bali. He's always, as Chris, Chris, he's always been in Bali. And he comes, he's in the States all the time. Oh, does he come back? All the time. <laughs> Literally. He's in New York. He's in L.A. When I say all the time, all, right, so all the time. Scratch that. Scratch that from the record. <laughs> I thought he's staying in Bali. No, that's an internet narrative that people created. Well, he should make some videos true. here, too, doing yoga. <laughs> but he, had, like, you know, he actually has a wellness retreat. No, I believe it. You, you I see believe Usher it. go there, you saw Taraji there, they all get flack when they go there. I believe right? it. Because it's Russell's place and nobody you can't stand next to Russell. Got it. But okay, that he's makes... not hiding out. So this Bali. this makes it all right, this is different. So okay, that's that's completely different. Because if Diddy wanted to get away, he could have got away. Diddy, for some reason, he's either incredibly arrogant and doesn't think that he can be taken down, or he believes that he's innocent, or he believes that there are people that would go down if he went down, and they wouldn't want that to happen. People all, in all of that of could be true, or he could just be too far gone. He could be too far gone off the drugs, oh, you think and the really? alcohol, and the power, and the ego, that he's yeah. just delusional as fuck. That power does corrupt, Oh, man. my God. You've seen it happen, huh? I'm, yes, a million times. Like when, when I, Yo, man, this actually, when I, when I read the indictment, I'm reading it, I'm just like, this is just a dude that's power, he's super power trippy. Super ego trippy, mm. and it's the drugs, and it's the alcohol, right? If you ask me, I think this man, this is just, this is a podcast, and this is what we do on a podcast. This is allegedly. Yes. I think this man has so much grief and trauma that he's just always trying to escape. Mm. That's why it's always so much drugs, so much alcohol, and sex. He probably just does that shit just to, uh, to run from whatever trauma he's mm. never dealt with. I think it's the sex, the drugs, it just helps him to escape, mm. and he's always constantly trying to escape. Because that's the other thing people are not talking about in this indictment. All the drugs they found, ketamine, coke, ecstasy, they said the night that they, or the night he turned himself in or they picked him up or whatever, he had fucking pink powder in the room. Mm. Clearly the guy got a problem. Clearly. Clear. Mm. I just, I just ain't never heard. The shit is just freaky, man. You got a thousand bottles of body oil. I mean, a, a baby oil and a thousand bottles of KY. Mm. Is that that's baby oil? He has like a refrigerator there in front of them. I don't know if that's. No, that's got to be AI. <laughs> that's got to be fucking AI. <laughs> that's <bro>. hilarious. <laughs> God damn, bro! A thousand bottles. But see, it's, here's the thing: I would like to know what else does he have in bulk. Yeah, maybe he buys in bulk. Maybe, maybe he, he got like Cheerios or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you got to get ready for the fucking apocalypse, baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because hey, you still want to have them freak offs in the apocalypse. Yeah. Listen, a thousand <laughs> bottles. I'm let a little apocalypse stop some freak offs. A thousand bottles of lube. Yeah. It's not a dry butthole in the building. <laughs> <laughs> okay? It's not a goddamn dry butthole in the building. Okay? So, what do you think happens with Diddy? Uh, he gets indicted in Miami. Because they're not even giving him bail. Yeah, he, pro he probably gets indicted in Miami and L.A. Wow. Um, spends a whole bunch of fucking money. I mean, I don't know. Like, he, pro he probably go to prison. Like, so know. this is sayonara. This is see you later. It's did they did they go in his New York house? Because, like, I'm wondering where's all this evidence coming from to charge him here. I thought it was Miami. That's why I, I was confused this morning when the lawyer was talking to me because I thought this was a federal case. And I thought that they had, you know, 
all of this was based on Miami, L.A., and everything else. Oh, maybe but then he told me this morning, he was like, nah, he's probably going to still get indicted in Miami. Oh, still wow. get indicted in L.A., which I didn't understand. I'm like, and this is crazy, bro. I know. <laughs> like, this headline is so fucking crazy. <laughs> We're recording this headline. <laughs> Diddy's trying to get a new bail today. And the headline is, I promise no female visitors if you let me out on bail. <laughs> what about the guys? Yo, nobody <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck about men's buttholes, bro. Yo, nobody cares about the sodomy that happens to men. <laughs> okay? What about the guys? I'm what good. about the fucking guy? There was guys in the indictment, bro. There's a part in the indictment where it says women and others. What the fuck is others? That's guys. <laughs> Can I imagine getting sex trafficked, bro, as an adult dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a little, <laughs> that's a little crazy. What if you found out your boy was getting sex trafficked? Getting sex trafficked, Because he did got, that allegedly, right? He, when he would have the guys fuck on the girls, like the professional guys fuck on the girls, How right? do you say that tougher is an adult man? You can't say you were sex trafficked. <laughs> you gotta say you was a prostitute. You're a gigolo. I'm a gigolo. I was a, I'm a gigolo, gigolo, bro. Yo, I, was a I was a gigolo. gigolo, bro. I was sex trafficked. <laughs> Imagine you in like one of them trauma meetings where you gotta say what you've been through. Everybody's saying the horrible <laughs> shit they went through, and you're like, I was sex trafficked across state lines by P. Diddy. He made me fuck on women and men. I'm just not that horny, bro. Yo, I just read stories read. like this. And I'm like, I'm son, just not that horny. I'm son, just not that horny. I'm just not. I, th I, th I read stories like this. I think there's something wrong with me. I'm like, yes. yo, like yo. damn, why am I not? I'm not horny like this. <laughs> no. I'm not that horny, bro. That ain't my style. Don't I can't need do it. it. Don't, Don't need no, it. Man. And he's 50 plus years old. No, bro. Can't stop, won't stop. At some point, you should. No. Okay. <laughs> Boosie says he disagrees with Diddy's charges. I, I, listen, man, you know what I'm realizing? And I was talking to uh, my homeboy. I, I say, salute the glasses. Make sure you listen to the No Ceilings podcast. I'm sure glasses will be talking about this on the No Ceilings podcast on the Black Effect I High Radio Podcast Network. But I'm realizing that a lot of people just don't know the law. Mm. So, yeah, if you want to just chalk it up to Diddy being freaky and you know, power tripping and ego tripping and, you know, being abusive and forcing people to do things because of his power, hmm. right? And you, and, and, and I, I want Glasses to explain for itself. All I'm simply saying is, you can say things like, hey, there's nothing wrong with buying pussy, but it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> it's illegal. Yeah. I understand yeah. what you're saying. When you say nothing yeah. wrong with buying pussy, but yeah. it's still illegal. It's against the law, yeah. Back in the day, there was nothing wrong with us smoking weed, really, but it was illegal. So if the yeah. police officers came in and saw us smoking weed and we get arrested for it, we know it's illegal, regardless of how normal it may be. Yeah. I know that people buy prostitutes, yes, but it's illegal. Mm. I don't know what to tell you, yo. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what to tell you. That's a good point. I, and they try to protect the girls, too. Like, you don't know the situations that those girls are exactly. in. Exactly. Like, that's, that's what I'm trying to explain. We talk about sex trafficking. You're buying prostitutes. They might be getting pimps. That, exactly. They might not have a say in who they're fucking. That's like, all I'm a lot of, you, you know, you got here, you're trying to protect women, man. Racketeering. Yes. Racket Life in prison. Uh. Smuggling butt. Bum, 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 Go ahead. No way. Sex trafficking. Maximum life in prison. Uh. Minimum 15 years. Transportation for prostitution. Maximum 10 years in prison. Listen, man, once again, I'm telling y'all, Minister Farrakhan says it the best. When you see people in these situations, don't laugh, learn. When you see men fall, don't laugh. Learn. Learn. Because you're on your way up. And the things that tempt people to fall, you and I are not free from that temptation, nor from the weakness that will cause us to stumble and fall. When you laugh at somebody else's fault, white or black, rich or poor, your enemy or your friend, you are laughing and opening a way for your own demise when you do that. Because to laugh and not learn, to make mockery and not to understand, is to make the same mistake yourself. But boy, I wonder the Minister Fry can't read this indictment. Nah, this nah, is yeah. the, he, he get a couple of chuckles. Bro. Yeah, he laughed at this. But but I will say this: your that man is Diddy is fifty plus years old. I don't know how long he's been engaging in this behavior, allegedly, but it seems like a long time. 
When I see stories like this, all it makes me do is buckle down on me. Meaning that... What the fuck does that even mean? Yeah. Buckle down on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> right? Is that a new Diddy move? Like, yeah, what is that? How do you buckle down on you, bro? Yo, what do you, how do you buckle down? You get some baby oil and buckle down on yourself? I didn't, I didn't know Buckle down on me. That's like you're trying to fuck your own self in the butt. What? <laughs> What? You gotta give yourself 10 lashes by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Take your fucking bicycle seat off. You put a dildo on that motherfucker. Bro, he made, he he made, made it, he made it 20 minutes. He made it 20 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Buckling hey, down on me. Yo, this guy Buckling down crazy. on me. <laughs> Buckling down on me. <laughs> T. Diddy, what do you give him before the pod? What do you give him? No, what I'm saying is for real. Man, when you got shit to lose, act like it. Yeah. Word up. That's the best advice I can give every dude out there listening to me right now. If you got something to lose, act like it. When I read that shit yesterday, the first bail, uh, the first bail shit he put up, where he was offered like $50 million in the house and everything, mm. all his family had to give up their passports. Look at how many lives you impact because you fucked up. Mm. Like if you really want to be a generational curse breaker, right? And you can change so many people's lives by the decisions you make. Mm -hmm. Imagine what happens when you make those poor choices. He made good decisions that got him to the point where he was worth a billion dollars. You know, kids had generational wealth, all of this. And he fucked it up because he couldn't control his urges. Mm. But isn't no it, discipline. Isn't it the same thing as like when people cheat? Like they're going to keep cheating until they get caught. More than likely. But that's what I'm saying, like for him. I mean, I get what you're saying. What you're saying is true, but he's not married. He's just a, from what I'm seeing in the indictment, he's a sexual deviant with a mm. super large ego mm. who uses his power, as the indictment said, to fulfill out his sexual desires. Yeah, I didn't realize he was such an addict. That, yes, sex addict, drug sex addict. Sex addict. Yes, yeah. alcohol addict, power addict, attention addict. Yeah. Bro, I'm telling you, man, that's why I be telling my, yo, yo, go to therapy. Deal with your trauma, or your trauma will ultimately deal with you. And if you got something to lose, fucking act like it. Mm -hmm. I promise you, man, before any decision, any choice you make, just think about everything. Think about your, your career. Think about your family. Think about your kids. Mm -hmm. Think about what happened. Think about, think about how hard you worked to get to that point to just fuck it off. Yeah. For some pussy and, or some bussy? For some bussy, bro. Are P and B together? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The pussy bussy combo the is pussy, crazy. Pussy pussy combo is crazy. <laughs> the pussy pussy combo nah, will confuse the fuck out of anybody, bro. That's insane. You know what I'm saying? That's the addiction. Pussy, the pussy bussy combo. But that is addiction. Where bro. to start? Where to finish? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter, bro. That is absolute insane. Charlemagne. That's how you know you're addicted to sex when it's no matter what. Like he don't give a fuck. Yeah, because that's sex addiction. Addicted to women is one thing. Addicted to men is another thing. But addicted to sex, it doesn't matter. That's I've, I. That's a. Yeah. That's why if I'm a judge and you and how dare you, if I'm a judge today in that courtroom yeah. and I read this shit and you insult me by telling me that you're not gonna have no female visitors, <laughs> what about the others, Sean? Yeah. Okay? <laughs> what about the others? Okay? <sighs> Dang. I don't know. Did he get bail? No. Not with that argument. Should he get bail? But what's interesting also is they say he's a slippery suspect. That's why they don't want to give him bail. You think that he, 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 he might slip out the country? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? What do I, you just, think? I just find it interesting that, like, he gave up the women first. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, it's like, can that we have bail? They're like, no. And he goes, ah, uh, no way. I, get rid of the women. I, we, I think we found out what he really can't live without. Because you know what he has? Wow. In, you know what he has wow. in jail? He has unlimited wow. men in jail. Wow. Wow. But he needs them on his terms. I'm going to be honest with you. He probably, not, when you say it like that, I'm think, I got to think about it another way. Okay, you give up the women first. Mm. But if it's the bussy, right, you can get that in jail. You know what's hard to get in jail? Lube. And drugs. And drugs. He needs the drugs. That's right.
Lube and drugs. I think he needs drugs to have sex with the women. I think he needs. <laughs> I think he needs drugs to escape from yeah. life. I think the what? moment. I think the moment Diddy gets sober is the moment that he really his mind will really slip away from him. Really? Yes. Because he has to deal with everything. He he's got to deal with every motherfucking thing. I think the moment he's actually sober and he got to sit in that jail cell and just think about life. And everything that he's probably been running from, that's the moment his mind slips away. Yeah. That's when fucking he's just sitting there and it's like DMX song starts playing. Slipping. Falling. Can't get up. Slipping. I'm falling. Got dick in my butt. <laughs> <laughs> All allegedly. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just reading diamonds. That's what I'm saying. I'm just <laughs> it's just all dick allegedly, in my butt. man. Slip Fuck. Got dick in my butt. butt. <laughs> Slip. Fuck. Dick in my butt. <laughs> oh my God, man. What's the funniest sound you can make while a dick's in your butt? That is a that, nah, but that's regular. No, like. it's not, man. You got to be a man about that shit, man. You can't take a dick in the butt and moan like. What, what if you take a dick in the butt? And you're like, hey, hey yo, what the yo. Fuck? <laughs> <laughs> man, Second yo. hey, yo, that would be funny. Hey, hey yo, pause, first pause, time virgin bussy. Pause. You ain't never had a dick in your ass. Twins. Somebody put it in. Hey, hey yo. yo, this dude is gay. Yo, listen, look at him. He listen, got a dick in his what butt. What if your safe word is pause? Pause. <laughs> when it starts to hurt, pause, 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 You should call Trav and ask him. I don't want to talk gay for real. <laughs> you always want to talk gay for real. Call who and ask <laughs> Trav him? Trav is a... I don't want to talk gay for real. You all want to I like to play gay on yeah, the podcast, but I don't want to talk to Trav. Jokingly gay. <laughs> exactly. We're jokingly everything on this podcast. Matter of fact, call Trav. Let's do call Trav. <laughs> I do want to know how they say Call Trav, call Trav. I just want to call, call he, Trav. He does the dicking, though. He don't take it. Okay, yeah. so let's just a good, he's so a top. the funniest Trav sound. is a top. Trav is a guy, calls the Breakfast Club all the time. Actually, come a come very in. talented artist. Come here, come here. Like come a come. phenomenal right. artist. He can really not, write uh, songs. Regular songs, too, not gay songs. Oh, that's what I, that's what I wanted to know. I'm like, <laughs> gay is he really? He has <laughs> one gay song, song though. What's it, what's it called? I forgot. But it's just like, it's oh, like he a. Should, just, he should write for women. Like he audience. does. He does. Oh, okay. that's smart. Yeah, yeah he does. Hmm. I'm, I'm back on the phone now. Damn, wait. Trav, we have a question for you. Put them on hold real quick. All right, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Trav, put them on hold. <laughs> So, so what, what I'm gonna do? Let me just see what other options that we have here for you. Other vaginal options. Shut up. <laughs> what, what did Trav say? Trav said, "Let's see what other options Yo, you got." Yeah, he's always the phone. <laughs> he does a call center. Okay, I'm sorry. We're doing the podcast Trav. right now. Charlemagne wants to, uh, has a question for you. Can you yeah. hear me, Trav? Okay. You what's that, Char? So, Trav, you a top? Yes, I am. Just tell me the sound that the guys make when you put it in. <laughs> I just did it for you. Oh, they don't make it oh, sound. Again? No, what? Give us a phone. Give us a phone. So we get. Hold on. I'm gonna put it up to the mic. Hold on. Right here. Right here. Right here. Just throw it. Just, just throw, throw it. Throw it. Tell it. Tell it. Throw it. I'm not throwing my phone. Why not? I don't trust you. So, so what's right. the sound they make, Trav? Right, so we put it in the like... Oh, they they take it. They inhale. This is Andrew. Um. <laughs> all right. So just what's the what's the funniest thing? That somebody said when you put it in. The funniest? Or like, just the weirdest. You got a little dick then, Trav. No, I don't know. If anything, it'd be like, oh, I mean, I don't want you to make me sound weird doing it. No, 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 no. no, no, no. We're trying to get real life exp uh, yeah. experience. They'd be like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> so, <laughs> it just sounded like a oh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, did anybody? Did anybody ever? Did anybody ever hit you with a pause? Yeah, yo. <laughs> Listen, you ever put it in? You ever put it in, Trav? And the guy went, "Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, that's that's gay." Ever they ever do that? Fuck with you a little bit? No, that, that, that never happened. But afterwards, definitely, it's been a little awkward moments afterwards where niggas don't want to be gay no more. Oh, oh wait wow. a minute! 
Wait a minute. Well, I forgot who I'm talking to. Is this Hold Diddy? On. So, Trav. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, Trav, when you be hitting it, you be slapping their cheeks? Yeah, what do you mean? What are you supposed to do? No way. Nah, come on. You call him Playboy? <laughs> you taking that play, Yo, you should remake Diddy's whole first album and call it No Gay Out. <laughs> I have a job to get back to y'all. Be on fire. All, All right, right yo, we might have some more questions. <clears throat> Peace. That's dead. That's take that. Take that. Take that. That's take that. Crazy. Oh, that sound crazy that now. That was crazy. crazy. I don't know, man. I don't know why that image is so crazy, but a man just, smacking. Yo, the like, man smacking the ass is just. Let's just I, listen. I don't know what's true and what's not true, right? Everything's alleged, but let's just say it's all true. Yeah. If I'm Diddy, you just admit to it. Admit to it. I mean, then he has to serve life in prison. <laughs> I mean, listen, you, we all got to be we all got to be know. held accountable. Charlemagne is one of the most ph phenomenal uh, lawyers in history. I, I don't know if, if you want counsel, it's Charlemagne. We all listen. We we gonna have to be held accountable regardless. But if you tell your real story, you never know. If you tell your real story, you go in the court and you. You fall on the sword. You fell on plenty already. But you tell <laughs> a motherfucking jury everything. Like, look, this happened to me as a child. Turned me into this. I'm addicted to all of this shit. Drugs, sex, right. the power, the money, the fame. I fucked up. I'm, get, I'm, I'm sleeping with men, women. All this, all type. Just put it all out there. And see what the fuck happens, bro. <laughs> yeah, you're still going to jail forever. Yeah, like, exactly. it'll, whatever happened to you as a child is tragic, but it doesn't justify you hurting other people. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm not saying that he should not be held accountable. Mm. I'm just saying for the sake of your soul. Mm. But other people are going to laugh For the sake of your him. soul. We're laughing anyway. I know. It really can't get any funnier <laughs> until the videotapes think? come out. When the videotapes <laughs> come out oh and we God. see... People on that videotape. By the way, if you went to the store to buy the lube, you're getting a conspiracy charge. Yo, you should be in there. <laughs> okay. That's Rico. Listen, you got to get him man, on the Rico. Listen, really? if you had an orgy with Diddy, oh, you might be going to jail. Lock him up. If you was butt naked with Diddy anywhere in the last 10 years, you might be going to jail. Lock if you was up. half butt naked with Diddy in the last 10 years, you might be going to jail. Lock him up. Straight up. Lock him up. You don't, like... If you went to Diddy's house and you know you was over there having a good time, you drinking the Ciroc, you slipping on the semen on the floor and shit, and it's mad women, <laughs> it's, it's women and bussy all around, and he's like, the world is yours, have at it, have at it, Playboy. If you partake in any of it, yep. you might pop up in an indictment. You might pop up on a videotape. <laughs> Straight up, they say they got the videotapes with, with, with the evidence all over it. If you ate Justin's peanut butter, <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> what? That's his peanut butter company, right? Justin got a peanut butter company? No, that's his peanut butter company. Did he got a peanut butter company? Peanut butter company? Didn't he name Justin's after his kid and they got a peanut butter company? No, <laughs> Diddy don't got no peanut Never butter company. <laughs> what? Where are you getting this from? If Diddy had a peanut butter company, that'd be crazy. He does have a peanut butter company. Well, Look somebody it up. need to bring him some peanut butter and he needs to take that peanut butter nah. and stuff it all in his pants. And when he goes to court today, he should put his hand in his oh. pants and then pull it out and lick his fucking fingers clean in front of the judge. Okay? <laughs> Charlamagne, you got active imagination. <laughs> yeah. No, that was training. Training day. That's how the guy ended up going, getting sent to the psych ward instead of jail in training day. Oh, really? You don't remember when the, the three wise men oh. were talking about a guy packed the peanut butter in his oh, ass? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're, ba you're a bad lawyer, though. Was I right about Justin's peanut butter? Diddy, Diddy, would, I, Diddy wouldn't pack his, he wouldn't mm. put peanut butter in Nothing came, came up. Yeah. That wouldn't but be a good Daddy thing to pack came back up. There. Fudge would, though. What'd you say, Taylor? Daddy butter came up, but not Diddy. Da oh my God! Nah. God damn! Nah, nah. You're not telling. Me. Nah. nah. No. Yo. No. If Sean Combs had a peanut butter called Daddy butter. Nope. God. Not, damn. Not happening, my boy. Not. <laughs> That's happening, Diddy's, my boy. No, it's there not. A, it just there came is a up. Justin's peanut butter. But oh I don't no, know no, if no, it's no! It is. That shit is actually really good. Yes, sir. Yeah, just that's, that's not uh, no, no, Diddy's no, no, peanut butter. No, <laughs> you thought that was Diddy's. Yeah, because didn't he have a restaurant? Yeah, a restaurant called Justin. Yeah, Dave restaurant. Restaurant his son. I thought that he started a peanut butter company. Daddy as well. butter is disgusting. Say again. Daddy butter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, the, the, that's when you reach the line. That's the line right <laughs> there. Would you eat a daddy butter and jelly sandwich? No. No. I no. <laughs> 
<laughs> what the hell is that? Diddy? All the buses he owns? All the businesses. Oh, businesses. I'm sorry. I'm getting old, man. I can't fucking see like that no more. What should happen with Ciroc? Ciroc is not even his no more. Should they? Should 50 buy Ciroc? Uh, I mean, listen, Ciroc is still a great brand. By the way, nobody talks about that um, um, enough, man. Nobody talks about how that was a fumble. It was a huge fumble because, you know, he sued the company. He won. For racism. He didn't win. I, yeah, I thought he won a, like a multi-billion dollar lawsuit. No. Charlamagne, Look I'm pretty up. sure he did. Look I thought that that's up. why all this started. No, nah, he didn't win. He sued. I thought he dropped it eventually. My understanding is that he won and it was multi-billions. And that's what I thought the was the catalyst and, for all this stuff. You know, the only reason I don't like conspiracy theories like that because we take accountability away from the person. And, you know, I, I, the other thing that people like to do is they like to say things like... Diageo reaches settlement with Sean Diddy Combs after the rapper and businessman accused the company of neglecting the two spirits, brands he co-owned due to race. The alcohol, oh, okay. Mm. All right. No, but then it says in January of this year that he withdrew all his allegations. Yeah, that's what I thought. Too. I thought he would... That's what I thought. And voluntarily dismissed the lawsuit. Because they settled with him. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah they gave him money, oh, so he's yeah. like, all right, I'm good. But I thought that... All right, well, cool, but here's my thing. I hope it was enough money to last a lifetime because, you know, that was a company that you were making like $40 million a year from. My understanding was it was a billion dollars something. Yeah, you made a billion dollars with them. You know what I'm saying? So if he... And listen, if he did, God bless him, you know? Uh, they say he's selling his jet right now and... You know, he, he did pay off his mortgage last month for one of his houses. I don't fucking know, yo. I, I don't know, man. This shit is just, once again, guys, only thing I can tell y'all is whatever. If you got something to lose, fucking act what like What happens it, to all the people that are around him that knew that this was happening? And some of them will get caught up in this free case. That's a fact. Some of them will, <laughs> you know. But once again, I don't like to blame any of them either. Why not? Because at the end of the day, you are the sole person responsible for your choices. There has to be some accountability. You're Andrew Schultz. That's what, that's what I'm saying, though. What do you mean? Like, if you're enabling this and you're part of this enterprise, you're responsible for your choices. Oh, no. Listen, if you read the indictment, he had workers and everything. They're going to get locked up. Okay. Good. If you went to the store to buy lube and baby oil for Diddy, yeah. you're probably going to get caught up in this conspiracy. There's tapes. The FBI know who else is on these tapes. You know what I'm saying? So that's the other thing that like bothered me about the Epstein shit is that none of the people that enabled, not Epstein, Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein, like none of the people that enabled Harvey Weinstein and stuff, none of the people that kept it going for fucking decades seem to get any accountability or... or I think Harvey shit was a little different. Harvey shit felt like it was more one-on-one -on -one shit. Like he would sure. be with you somewhere and be like, yo, you need to do X. But he didn't seem like he had a whole lot of people involved. Did he seem like he had a whole... A lot of people involved, you know what I'm saying, doing the orgies and all of that shit like that. I don't know. I mean, like, if he's having young actresses meet him up in hotel rooms, like, he's got to have assistants and that kind of stuff setting that up. Those assistants know what he's doing to those actresses in the room. Do they I, know, though? I, in, in their mind, they might just be thinking they fucking... Yeah, I guess that's right. I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, the reason this kind of stuff continues to happen is because the people that enable it happening never get punished. And once the people that enable these things happening start getting punished, then in the future, people will be pretty terrified to enable somebody in these positions, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're the assistant of somebody, you gotta go get a thousand things of baby oil, and it's like, wait, is that gonna be Nobody used? thinks that weird? How do you make that request to somebody? Like a thousand yeah. fucking <laughs> tubes of baby oil and yeah. lube. Why? Or well, he stopped using them. Maybe he started liking it dry. Ugh. Oh my god! <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't know his taste. Like he went men, women. Now he wants it dry. He likes it extra true. dry. Some people like dry martinis. Facts. The same thing. Facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It really is. You get some dry cheeks, bro. Really dry nice. cheeks on the rocks. Y'all never tried dry cheeks? What do you think the sound of that is? <laughs> 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 what happens to Young Miami though? Man, what she ain't got nothing to do with this. Why what, not? What though? Diddy got going on? This is years and years and years. Right. Everybody keep bringing up Young Miami now because like they know her. Young Miami is so. If if this was a universe, she's like a little 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 well, little little shiny. Well, star. she was involved in it though. The freak offs. If she is, then they gonna they gonna bring her in the wit. Does it testify? Oh yeah. That's crazy. Now the question is, who is he gonna flip on? Or is there anybody for him to flip on? Because I think he's going to squeal. 
That sounded Boom. gay. <laughs> All of that. Like, who is he going to flip on? And then I think he's going to squeal. <laughs> like, 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's flipped on enough from what the fucking indictment said. <laughs> okay? Um, I don't know who you tell on. He's got to have dirt on people, man. He does. This is a powerful dude. It's a powerful dude. He's got to have plenty of dirt. I know two already. No, you don't. They came to the show. Go, go. I told you. Bleep it. Ooh. We'll bleep it. Go. Hey, cut. See what I'm saying? That's that, that's. Lily bragged about how they were at Diddy's party. Yeah, Diddy but I about said about powerful him. people. Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Listen, I that said is very powerful true. people. Taylor. Oh. Taylor. Oh. You, yeah, oh. like, I'm Taylor. just saying just people. You think Taylor. he's going to offer the FBI? Listen, guys, I got, some, okay. I got some secrets okay. on okay. Listen, listen to this. <laughs> Taylor, you really think those are the only two people who've been to Diddy parties? No, I'm this just saying. This guy has been in the industry for 30 years. I can name years. two. Hey, there's nobody who that hasn't, hasn't been to a, to a Diddy, Diddy party, party in the past 30 years. Okay, so you've been to one. You've no. been to a Diddy party? I've never <laughs> been to a Diddy party. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. Yeah, I'm, I mean, not in, I'm not in no, the I'm music saying, industry, though. I'm dapping you, you up. Bro. I'm saying you I, fought the urge. I've, I've never been to a Diddy party. That ain't my style. I, first of all, the way my anxiety is set up, I don't like to be around none of these motherfuckers no way. Number two, mm -hmm. I talk too much shit about a lot of these motherfuckers. Be Everyone the be in rooms with them. That's not how we get down. I've never gotten down like that. Like, I build my own industry. I don't, that, that's old school industry to me. Yeah. I've never been to a Diddy party. The only, and I, I was funny, I was having this conversation yesterday and I was talking about how like, um, there's only like two people from like that old industry regime that I actually fuck with in a real way. Who? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say. But, <laughs> right? But like everybody else is people I literally came up with. I've been in the business for 26 years. Hmm. So the first person I ever interviewed on the radio was Fabulous. So think about that. This is 1998 when Fab's album wow. was first coming out, right? I knew T.I. when T.I. was in between deals, when he went from uh, LaFace to Atlantic. Like, Killer Mike, I've known these guys for over 20 years. Jeez, I've known all these because I was doing radio in South Carolina. Yeah. So I know these people. We've, we've grown together in this, this business. But there's a whole other regime that's older, like the Diddy's them, that was around way longer than us. Uh. And people think because we worked at Revolt. We was at Revolt for eight years. Diddy was never my boss you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We had a partnership with Revolt. That didn't mean we hung out. Yeah. That didn't mean we kicked it. Like, no. So. Oh, wait, we do know my friend. What? So, so my, my, my point is, everybody used to go. The same way everybody going to Michael Rubin parties now? Yo. Diddy used to have the white party back in the day. Please don't. Michael, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, don't let the, don't make the baby oil order. Whatever you do, Michael, this is your moment. Damn. Oh, yeah. Diddy did used to throw the white party. Yeah. yeah. Why did he stop, stop I wonder. Uh, people stopped showing up. Yeah, they used to have to, uh, it, was, it was a bunch of accidents. They used to have to have to put the signs out. Here the slippery go. signs. I knew it. I the wet it. floor signs. No, they used to put all the wet floor signs down. And like people were just randomly falling. And they would call them freak accidents. <laughs> You're just randomly slipping at Diddy parties and don't know why. You're like, what the fuck? That was a freak accident. I bet it was. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't know what happens with Diddy. I just know that it is some shit to see, bro. Yeah, it is. God damn. It's like we've been alive for 46 years and we've seen some shit. Someone put up a post saying, lock uh, the son that looks like him too, just in case. Whoa. Wow. I'll tell you this, man. That's not fucked up. I don't, I don't, I, I, I pray that his children don't get caught up in this shit like that. But I will say this, young Christian. Uh, a few months ago, we was on this podcast, and I was on Breakfast Club, and I told you, you don't play with the feds. You made that <laughs> little song mm -hmm. talking about the feds should have checked the next house, this and that. It's, it's all fun and games so them motherfuckers lock, locking shit up, right? Oh, wow. It's all fun and games taunting the feds until they motherfucking got your daddy in handcuffs, and you never know where they might end up with you either. Man, why, why taunt the feds? Especially if you know what's in the house. Hubris. You know it's AK-47s in the house with serial numbers scratched off. I would think, right? Yeah. You, I definitely know you know it's a thousand bottles of lubrication. 
<laughs> <laughs> like that shit ain't hidden somewhere. Like I'm just saying, you see, I'm sure he's seen the girls and you know what's going on. Yeah, but why he, taunt the feds? He learns from his dad, and his dad has so much arrogance and Oof. has been moving this way, and now he learning that. Untouchable. Fact, yeah. yeah. Just feels untouchable. Now listen, man, before we move on, and we probably won't move on. We probably keep Hold coming on. back to this throughout the pod. Huh? What should Diddy be for Halloween? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm just should, saying. Should, <laughs> was it just last year that he dressed up as um uh the, the pen, Joker? The, the Pennywise. Joker. Was that last year? Oh. Oh, the Pennywise? I thought it was the Joker. When last was year. the Pennywise one? I don't fucking remember. Uh the Pennywise. I remember the Pennywise one. Joker. <laughs> he did play the great Joker. Listen to me. Yeah. Guys, <laughs> if you got something to lose, act like it. Mm. Amen. Don't let your dick lead you. Don't let your ego lead you. If you got a drug problem, go motherfucking get clean. Get help. I mean, I've seen it a million times, yo. It's people out here that they get some power, they get some fame, mm. they start getting some money, and they lose it. Yeah. And they, you, this could be, this can be you. You may not think this can be you. But if you don't check your motherfucking self, you will wreck yourself. Mm. And you got to have real people around you. All it took is one person to say, what the fuck are y'all doing? Mm. Guns with serial numbers scratched off? Yeah. All these young motherfuckers around, prostitutes and all this shit. You got prostitutes, yeah. fucking girls. Not like, bro, you're worth a billion dollars. Act like it, bro. But I imagine he's the type of person that nobody could tell him anything. God yeah. damn. Yeah. Remember him making the band days? Like, oh, yeah. He's a tyrant. Yeah. He definitely did make a whole bunch of kids walk to Brooklyn. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's a power move right yeah. there. God damn. That's a humiliation ritual. God damn. Yeah. Let's pay some bills, man. Oh, Lord have mercy. Guys, back to school means back to busy schedules. Chomps are the perfect on-the-go snack that you can always fit into the busiest of schedules. Whether that's between classes, on the way to practice, or a much-needed protein pick-me-up for parents in the pickup lane. Chomps have the protein your body needs and the flavors that you crave. I'm telling you, Chomps is the go-to snack. It's in between pods when we're here. We're getting work done the studio. There are Chomps here. We are devouring them, okay? Looking for a healthy snack that doesn't compromise on taste? Say hello to Chomps. Chomps meat snacks have up to 12 grams of protein, zero grams of sugar, and are made with only real ingredients. And finally, a snack that fills you up that's made of ingredients you can actually feel good good about. Chomps come in 10 delicious flavors. So there's something for everyone. They're made with only the highest quality protein like grass fed and finished beef and antibiotic free turkey. The only tough choice is what flavor to try first. So right now Chomps is offering 10% off your first order when you sign up to their email list by going to chomps.com slash idiots. Go to chomps.com slash idiots to see all the delicious flavors and get 10% off your first order when you sign up to their email list. That is C-H-O-M-P-S dot com slash idiots. Don't forget to use our link so they know that we sent you. Now let's get back to the show. All right, let's do some church announcements. Show us what you got. This weekend, uh, Life Tour, I'm coming to Ohio, Cleveland, and Columbus this weekend. Uh, next weekend, uh, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, um, and then more cities, theandrewschultz.com. Go get those. We've added shows in a bunch of cities, so go grab those tickets at theandrewschultz.com. Do not grab them on the uh, secondhand markets because they're going to fuck you with the, uh, the price of the tickets, man. So go grab them on my website. And you get them for the prices they're supposed to be. Thank you guys so much, everybody who came out in Vegas. Same came out in San Antonio last week and was crazy. So uh, I appreciate y'all. Uh, I got a few church announcements, man. Uh, this weekend, this Friday, I'll be in New Orleans, uh, Xavier University. I'll be there Friday for your NOLA Love event, 10 a.m. at the Convocation Center. So I'll see y'all there. And then 7.30 p.m. that night, I'll be at uh, Baldwin Books, okay? I'll be there in conversation with Sharice Gibson of WWL-TV New Orleans. So uh, go to baldwinandcompanybooks.com for tickets okay there should be some tickets up i know they had they had to move it outside uh because it's such a good crowd so go to ballwinningbooks.com for tickets uh also man i gotta salute my guys all the smoke matt bonds and steven jackson you know i got a book imprint with simon and schuster called black privilege publishing their book their coffee table book all the smoke will be in bookstores october the 
8th, all right? So you can go pre-order that right now. If you're a fan of All The Smoke podcast, you're going to love the Coffee Table book because some of your favorite uh, All The Smoke conversations are in there with the pictures and transcripts of the conversation. It's really, really dope, man. It's really a, a, a collector's piece. It's something I want to see all, all the big podcasts do. Because some of these podcasts have been around for so long and, you know, they have such loyal fan bases. It's it's like it's, it's having a piece of your podcast for you. You know yeah. what I mean? And if yeah. you've been documenting it through pictures the way All The Smoke has, uh, it'll make for a great coffee table book. So go pre-order that. I also want to tell y'all that the Mental Wealth Expo is on October 12th. Go to mentalwealthexpo.com. Come for more details, man. We got some very, very great psychiatrists and therapists uh, that will be there. Let me name some of them for you. We have um, uh, Dr. Alfie Breland Noble, Dr. Rita Walker, Dr. Jay Barnett will be there, uh, Dr. Cheyenne Bryan, my man Elliot Connie, my guy Tyrese will be there. Yes, Tyrese Gibson, he'll be there in conversation with Jason Wilson. Um, man, it's a lot of great people. Angela Rye is going to be there, Dr. Callie Hobson. Um, my man Trent Out Loud is going to be there. And it's a free event from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Marriott Marquis Times Square in New York City. So just go to mentalwealthexpo.com uh, to register to be there. And one more church announcement. Salute to my guys at AWA. Uh, AWA is a comic book studio that my man um, Axel... Axel Alonzo is the editor-in-chief of... Axel Alonzo used to be the editor-in-chief of uh, Marvel Comics, but now he's the editor-in-chief over at AWA. And I announced my new comic book that I'm putting out, a new graphic novel called... Guess what, Schultz? What? The Illuminati. No. The industry has its secrets, and fame has a price. When a rising hip-hop star dies under mysterious circumstances, her twin sister, a young woman with psychic abilities, journeys to the City of Angels for answers and becomes en enmeshed in a dark conspiracy that snakes its way through the pillars of power, fame, and pop culture. All I can say is this may or may not be based on a true story, mm. okay? Illuminati. Ill. You see this hat I got on? Illuminati. The Illuminati will be revealed. Any secrets you want to know? If you want to know what's behind the curtain, it may or may not be in this graphic novel. So go to kickstarter.com. I don't want to know any more secrets, bro. Oh, these are, these are good. <laughs> I'm done with the, the cover? Secrets, Look at the bro. cover. I'm Look at done. The cover. I don't want to know. That cover. Look at that cover. I, I know. I hate Food to my guy, Sanford Green. Sanford Green. I wish we never <laughs> learned about anything. Like, I want to believe we went to the moon. I, you know what I mean? I don't want to know all the truth. Like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Go to kickstarter.com. I'm done with all the information. Type in my name, Charlemagne, or just type in Illuminati, I-L-L-U-M-I-N-A-T-I, in order a copy of Illuminati. And we're going to be at Comic-Con. I'm doing New York Comic-Con oh, on fine. Friday, October 18th, 3.45 p.m. We'll be in room 103C with my man Dennis Cohen and Axel Alonzo and Rob Markman mar uh, moderating, talking about my new comic, Ill Illuminati. So we'll see you there. Now, let's get back to the show, man. I hate Taylor Swift. I thought about you. I didn't want to bother you because you was in Vegas. I was like, Schultz is having a conflict right now. <laughs> two of your favorite people, <laughs> two of your favorite people, Trumpito just decided yeah. to randomly wake up on a Sunday morning, very strategic. He knew the Kansas City Chiefs had an early game. Mm. All right, he knew that all the cameras was going to be on Taylor Swift. So he decided to wake up and put in all caps, I hate Taylor Swift. Unhinged or nah, Schultz? Unhinged. Unhinged. Stupid move. Absolutely stupid move. Why do you think? I don't know. He's just fumbling left and right. Like, I, I, I'm so confused by the whole thing. It just makes no sense. He's old, bro. He might be old, but it old. also just feels like strategically, like, I think he was in Vegas. He didn't show up to the sphere. Like, I don't know if he's, like, scared to be. Maybe it was the Mexican Independence Weekend or something. But, like, <laughs> he, it, it, like, I, it's just seemingly, it's seemingly his his team really just, or he just not, he don't, it doesn't have the motion, twin. You know what I'm learning? He don't really have any game plans. We, we laughed at what he said at the debate when he said, I have a concept of a plan. Mm. But I really think he wings it a lot of the time. And I think that, 
they had a plan for Biden, but do you really need a plan for Biden? No. Like, like, like he's terrible. Yeah. All you got to do is just show up, right? Right. I don't think he has a plan right now. And I think that this is just all reactions. I think he's almost like a, uh, we, we used to say he's like a Twitter dude, right? And, and he is like a Twitter troll. He just says whatever he needs to say to keep his name in the headlines. Mm -hmm. But is that going to win you an election? I think it starts to get exhausting. Like if, there needs to be some substance. And even if you can't even do it, like he tweeted out one thing or he said it in a, in one of his speeches or whatever, that I thought was was interesting. Even if it's completely impossible to do, he's like, we're not going to tax people on overtime. Right? Mm -hmm. That's substance. Because think about how many people are working overtime going, holy shit, how much money would I save yeah. if, if you weren't going to tax me on my overtime? Like, I don't know if there's any way to get this passed. You would need the Senate, I think, to support it. I don't know if it's possible. Like, I don't know what type of deficit we would build up because we're not getting <laughs> overtime hours. I don't know. But my point is that's something you say that hope is attached to. He all, but he's, that is what he's good at. But Meaning he's not that, doing any of that right now. No. He's doing this little bickering bullshit. Like, well, I hate Taylor Swift. I it's like, him, shut up. Bro. Yesterday he was like, yo, he want to bring the auto industry back. I think he was in Michigan. Mm -hmm. So you say that there, that hits. But tell me, how are you going to bring it back? Hope True. is the only way forward. And, like, I like the idea of, like, not taxing tips. Just saying these things. Like, all these politicians, they're going to lie to us. But at least lie to us about some shit that makes us feel good and feel hopeful. I'm glad you asked that, though, because a lot of Trump supporters, you're, I'm not, you're, I don't, you're not a Trump supporter, but a lot of Trump supporters say they don't ask for, they'll, they'll ask for policies and ask how the Dems are going to do that. Mm. But when he just says things, they just, yeah! Oh, bro, these guys, because, you know, I put out that rant. What was it, last week or something like that? And the rant, rant, I just did the rant about like uh, him getting dog walked at the debate. So all all his like uh, super fans, first of all, his super fans are so fucking woke. I don't even know why they talk about it. It's the exact same woke shit on both sides. They're like right wing woke and left wing woke is the exact same thing. There's only one way they could see the world and everyone else is against them. There's no nuance, no nothing. If you had eyeballs and ears, you watched the debate, you thought he got smoked and he was unhinged. Anyway, I said it, and it was just so funny to see the reaction. People do not want you to be truthful. They no. do not want you to be objective. They just want you to coddle them and make them feel good. And the extreme left and the extreme right are the exact same. They just want to be told, oh, you're right. Whatever you feel is right. And if you divert from that in any way, anyway. shape, or form, you are the enemy. Man. Fuck you. You're a piece of shit. You're not funny anymore. Oh, I was funny when I made you feel good? Man. I criticize Joe Biden, I'm MAGA. I criticize Trump, I'm love Kamala. Left, opera. left, left opera. yeah, what Democratic shit. Democratic, yes. uh, uh, yeah. Democratic, bro, I was in a restaurant, man, Saturday. Yo. Operative, yeah. I was in a restaurant Saturday. Cause I was, I was out all day Saturday. I went to go see a friend. We had a nice get together at the friend's house playing spades. Salute to my homegirl, Rachel. Rachel, love you, we had a good time. And then uh, we went to dinner and it was a table full of Latinos. Salute to them. And <laughs> Charlemagne, give me a pound. He's like, Charlemagne, the whole table, the men, women, everything. Charlemagne, oh, we fuck with you, bro. Come on, bro, tell me, bro, tell me, bro, tell me, bro. You with Trump, right, bro? You with us, right, bro? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm voting for Kamala. Nah, come on, bro. I know you got the MAGA hat in your back pocket. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What have I said that would make you think I'm voting for Donald Trump? Because, because I criticized Biden and I was right. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you mean to tell me everybody else that was in actual, actually in the, that administration, all the people, the Barack Obamas, the Nancy Pelosi's, who, the Chuck Schumer's, all of these people who also finally said, Joe, you got to go. You got to go, Joe. Are they supporting Donald Trump? Just because they have eyes and ears and it's obvious to them that this person shouldn't be running. I don't think Trump should be running right now. I've told y'all this. I think this man wants to just go away. He's over. He's gotten shot at. They trying to put him away. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 I think they found some. Uh, some they found they found some explosives in a car near one of his rallies. Recently, too. again. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in Long Island. A How long after the shit that just happened with the guns at the golf course? I think it was either so. earlier this morning. Come on, morning. man. Yeah. It's like yeah, he don't want to do this no more. You can tell. What you mean he don't? They trying to get him the fuck out of here. Nah, I don't. That's amateur hour. Everybody keeps saying, like, 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 we got like, couple, all these assassination attempts. This is Showtime at the Apollo Amateur Hour, bro. If oh, they really wanted Trump out there. Year. Huh? 
<laughs> it grazed his ear. That's the- amateur hour. <laughs> First of all, let's be clear. If the real powers that be was trying Mark to take that. Trump out, Mark they would that. not be doing old school shit like shooting at him, bro. What would they be doing? Some shit that we ain't seen before. Making his pager explode. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Word up. They'll be doing some shit that we never seen before. They, they wouldn't be doing this shit sitting in the bushes at the golf course. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, come on. Like, cut it out. Every yo, that's why it bothers me when uh they try to make it seem like this is Democrats behind this shit. No, they would be doing something way more sophisticated and they would get them if they really wanted to get them. This is just a bunch of fucking crazy ass people Mm -hmm. doing dumb shit. By the way, we act like this doesn't happen to presidents all the time. Do you know Barack Obama had more attempts on his life, three times more attempts on his life than any president ever, Hmm. ever? How come we didn't hear about it? I don't, I don't fucking know. I really don't. If you go, Google it. No, I, I believe it. Google attempts saying. on Barack Obama's life. He had three times the attempts on his life more than any president ever. As president? Or As just- president. There was those guys in Colorado. Um, they, sent, they sent two letters to his house. Or, or to somebody with poison on him. No, oh, I believe you. I believe yeah. you. You don't need to prove it. I, I mean, listen, this is a problem, I think, also by yeah. promoting it. Like... When you get behind it and you promote it, you create copycats. And I think that my fear is that that's what's going to happen now, that crazy people, because the last person that they found on his property is clearly a crazy person, is that crazy person, crazy people get wind of this stuff and think that they should also do it. You think he was a Swifty? That guy? Yeah. You think it's a coincidence that he tweets out, I hate Taylor Swift, and hours oh, later? wow. She sent the goons for him. I bet you Taylor could get someone killed. <laughs> They love, people, Taylor can get somebody killed by just being Taylor. She don't have to say nothing. Mm-hmm. People love her. Mm-hmm. You tweet out, I hate Taylor Swift, one of her crazed ass fans. Mm-hmm. Check that motherfucker's playlist, man. <laughs> Straight up. Check his motherfucking playlist. See what he got on there. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy he was a Republican, though. Yeah, but he's also like. He's also like a lunatic. He went out to the Ukraine and he was per, he was like supporting the Azov Battalion or whatever like that. I think that's the ones that like had the Nazi ties. Oh, there's a lot of spooky shit going on with yeah, him. Man, might have been in the Diddy indictment. I think you probably <laughs> don't know. Was. You just gotta say you you just don't know. I, and by the way, there is no room for political violence. I'm not with this shit. I don't want to see no presidents, no elected officials getting shot at. It's just politics at the end of the day, y'all. Like yeah. that's it. Like, nothing more, nothing less. Vote for you who you want to vote for. And, you know, when the person that wins, make that motherfucker be a president for all of America. It's also bad when presidents are getting killed regularly because it will stop anybody who's, uh, you know, smart enough to actually be president from trying to do it. You know what I mean? Like, if you if you go, if you go into being president going, yeah, there's probably a 50% chance that I'm going to get killed, yeah. you're going to significantly reduce the quality of applicants. Well, we keep, we, we keep increasing the chances of shit like that happening when we demonize both sides. Yeah. Everybody, like, if you're a Democrat and you're a Republican, that is fine. Yeah. You don't have to act like the other person is the enemy. You don't yeah. have to act like the other person is a demon. Why can't we just treat them like the uh, corporations do? Talk to me. I'm just saying, like, the corporations, like, the big corporations don't seem to have a problem with Republicans or Democrats. They... You know, fund them both and lobby them both and get yeah, whatever true. the fuck they want. Yeah, so this true. whole culture war that the rest of us are subjected to is ridiculous because no matter who wins, we're still going to be in these senseless wars. No matter who wins, they're still going to be pumping the American people full of these pharmaceuticals. We don't know what the fuck is going to oh happen 30 years later. So <laughs> there's this idea of a culture war that we all subscribe to, but the people that are making money off the country at the top are funding either side. They don't give a flying fuck. They don't give a flying fuck. So it's all bullshit. Here we are bickering over nothing while these other guys get rich. Fuck that. It's because that's all we have. We don't have the money they got. So all we have is the noise. It's complaining. That's it. We don't don't have the money, so we can't really uh, uh, impact any change. So all we can do is make motherfucking noise. Yeah. That's it. That's literally all we can do. I, 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 I was somewhere last night don't confuse no, noise. Don't confuse noise for change. Don't confuse noise for change. 
Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't make noise if you want change, but there's a lot of noise that's for your own ego. You will make noise if you're getting changed. Like if somebody takes their mm. dick and put it in your butt <laughs> and you've never had a dick in your butt, when you start making that noise, mm. you getting changed, yeah, okay? You, <laughs> you will. <laughs> right? Yeah. Don't make me change you. Give me your daddy butter. <laughs> daddy butter. Give me your daddy butter. <laughs> I want your daddy butter. <laughs> Yo. Yo, you can't say give me daddy butter while you're getting spread. Why not? You already getting spread. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got, Taylor? What's that? In Kendrick Lamar, what does that mean? Wait a minute. We got I'm all memes Kendrick necessary. Lamar. Taylor, can you bring up... T. Diddy, can you bring up your, your uh, section, please? It is. Oh, okay. UFC CEO Dana White addresses oh, yeah, Terrence shit. Crawford and Kendrick Lamar uh, mixed up. At the fight, they put up... Uh, Terrence Crawford was there, and they said he was Kendrick Lamar. I think they did that on purpose. I don't even I, I don't even think that was like I think they did that because Kendrick Lamar says in the song, yeah. I'm Terrence Crawford, I'm whipping feet. I think that's good promo promotion for UFC. <laughs> you think that you think they really fucked up? Yeah. Yes. yes. So was Kendrick supposed to be there? Nah. I don't know, bro. I think I they did this on they, purpose. I don't know why they ever put the name. It's too risky putting the name. Is like, it? yeah, because if you're famous and they put you on, people are either going to know who you are or they're not. They don't need to read the name to know who you are. And it's always these types of situations where they end up fucking up. Don't put the name. You'll never fuck up. Just put yeah, them on it. The person watching doesn't know who that person is. Now you're just showing a random guy. Well, what happens is... the name and now you know, oh, that's somebody. But the announcer always says it. We have blah, blah, blah here. Oh, uh, sometimes. But sometimes, like, you know, like... Uh, Madison Square Garden, they just show Celebrity Row and they don't really yeah. say who, who's on it. Yeah, but they, they never fuck up the Madison Square Garden shit because they'll they'll hit you before. So you day. don't think they did this on purpose at all? Nah. Just because Kendrick Lamar said in the song, I'm Terrence Crawford, I'm whipping feet. I mean, that is lucky and they should definitely go off that. I think Dana even says it. Let me hear, let me hear what Dana said, man. That, that was pretty bad. He did kind of look like Kendrick Lamar. No, let's not, <laughs> let's not fuck around. He kind of did look like Kendrick Lamar. Um... But, but yeah, yeah that, 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 that was, was, hey, so, so when I said we had a flawless <laughs> production tonight, I, I take that back. Yeah, there's the one. That was the love. <laughs> yeah. But see, I do this, I'll do the same thing on purpose. I'll be like, for the buzz. I'll be like, yeah, Joe Rogan, UFC, UFC CEO Joe Rogan. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Actually, like, they should lean into it for the next one. They should purposely fuck somebody up. Yes. Yeah, that's a fun like, little thing to continue doing. I, I, I think yeah. whoever did that did it on purpose. I really do. Yeah. Because Kendrick said, I'm Terrence Crawford, I'm whipping feet. I, I really feel like that. I Yeah, I promise you that's not. That didn't happen? No, no, no. But okay. I like that, you know, you look at, you know, people in a positive light like that. <laughs> Did you see Terrence yeah. Crawford in the fight? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, what's up? Okay. Yeah. He dapped you up? He didn't know who the fuck I was. <laughs> he, <didn't know> he, <laughs> he thought you were Shane Gillis? <laughs> he, had no, he, had, he, had, he had no clue. He, was, he had no clue who I was. I saw Breezy, though. Breezy did. Yeah, did he teach you any dance moves? No, no, no. It was, I mean, like, that it is, was... That is, <laughs> did he teach you any dance moves? Like, Chris Brown's just walking around giving out dance moves. <laughs> no, I would think you asked him or something. No, I didn't ask him for any dance moves. <laughs> that would have been kind of awkward. God damn, Yo, nice Taylor. to meet you, man. Can yeah, you teach me some dance moves? the squad like that. Yo, I yeah. hope that when you see motherfuckers like Chris Brown in the street, you don't be saying shit like that. Why would I he say that? He teaches some dance moves. Why yeah. would I say that? I don't know. Don't embarrass us. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. That's all you can think to say to Chris Brown? I'm saying from Andrew's point of view. You sound like me when I met Prince. What did he say? <laughs> I, I grew up Jehovah Witness too. <laughs> I didn't know what else to fucking say. It was Prince. That's what she said? Yes. Wow. I was like, oh, we got to talk about that one day. Oh, shit. That's how it starts. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. What What's does this? that mean, Taylor Gang? What is uh, it wasn't me? Jack got Oh, yeah. What's this? So, um, where's the original? So, this picture was with Shaq and a girl. He tried to deny it, and then the girl basically put up receipts. Um, Why do you need rece receipts for a single man? Shaq ain't married. No, I mean, because she felt a way that he's trying to act like that wasn't her. That wasn't him, basically. That, first of all, once again, Shaq is being funny. Am I tripping? Who doesn't know this is Shaq? But then he put yeah. up these pictures saying, like, oh, I guess these are my wives, too, then. Or, well, my, so my bad, my girlfriends, too. I guess he's just trying to say that's not my girl. Yeah. That's it, but that's clearly him. 
What is it? Does he have his hand on all their breasts? Yes. No, oh, no it's just on. in front of the it. Shack like front that. of it. Come on. Yeah, yo. he's nine feet tall, bro. Yeah, but why is it always that position? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where else is Shaq gonna stand to even if he stands? You can just put their arm around him. You don't have to like <laughs> get it, my boy. Don't let them they shame love you. Shaq, get man. it, my boy. They love Shaq. People love Shaq, bro. Yeah, he Shaq is. Shaq is one of the most lovable humans on the planet. I never met him. I want to meet Shaq. Man. Shaq is gravity. Really? Bro. Is he really big in person? Come on, what kind that of that sounds crazy? crazy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> nah, just on TV. He's only seven fucking two on TV. Like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, he's big in person. But like shit. big, big, like, oh shit. It's when he walks, there's a gravity. Like literally human beings are just just attracted to him. Yeah. And it's a really peculiar thing. And I can't imagine what that does to your perspective on life when that's been the case for like 30 years. By the way, you can't teach that. Like what Shaq has, it's because he's just a naturally born star. He was born to be that individual. That's why I think him and Angel Reese connect so well. Because mm. you can't teach that. Mm. You can't teach that level of stardom, why people are attracted to a person, why a person has a magnetic personality that mm. folks just gravitate towards him. If Shaq was if Shaq, if Shaq was my height with that personality, he'd still get the same type of energy. Yeah. Shaq and Kevin Hart are like the same person. Hmm. Uh, Personality wise, uh, like the same type of energy. Yeah, they're just yeah. superstars. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you you don't know it just is what it is. Mm -hmm. And just think about that. Think about the package Kevin comes in, but he has this je ne sais quoi that yeah. you just can't fucking. Some people got it. Factor man. in, and Shaq come in this big package, and he got the, the same je ne sais quoi. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Big package. Shout out to Kev too. I got a um <laughs> I got a new episode of my series Out of Context uh, on YouTube with, with with Kevin Hart this week, man. Your name came up in it a couple of times. What is this? It's a uh, you know I do a, I do a one on one series where I do one on one conversations oh, with yeah. people. Yeah, I'm doing it on purpose because like I just I call it out of context because I'm actually I want to put people's careers in context. Okay. So you know the first one was LL Cool J, so just putting him in the right context of being the first hip hop superstar. Yeah. And everything he's actually accomplished. Why even objectively, whether you enjoy him as a rapper or what, he has to probably be on everybody's Mount Rushmore. Mm. Right. Then the next one was Big Sean, right? Because we just had this whole, you know, battle of the big three and mm. Kendrick, you know, prove that it is just big him. Yeah. So where does where do the Sean's and the Wale's and all of those guys fall in? Got it. Right? So putting that in context. And then this one was with Kev. And just talking about Kev as the mogul and businessman that he is mm. and putting those things in context and putting things in context like, you know, situations like Cat Williams or him being an industry plant, all of that type of stuff right. like that. Right. So, yeah, go check that out on my uh, my YouTube page. See the guy. When is that out? G-H-A-G-O-D. It's out now. Uh, it's awesome. Kevin Harwin came out like uh, two days ago. It's out now. Uh, what else we got, Taylor? Um, last one. What did that say? Get, get black, get it. Oh sexy. man! Shout out to Kodak Black and Sexy Red. <laughs> what they do? I, I just love seeing them together. I love when Kodak Black do that little dance. Like he get behind her and he be grinding. I like when he do his little feet. <laughs> hey, 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 get it yet? Hey, 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 yeah. hey, hey. Oh god! That, by the way, can't teach what they got. Yeah, yeah. Kodak, can't teach what they got. Kodak a star. You can't bro. teach what Kodak got, bro. Kodak is Kodak. Kodak would be Kodak whether he was rich or poor. Or poor. Yeah. That is him. You can tell. All the money did was multiply who he is by a hundred. And he's just a good kid, man. That's trying to figure it out. Uh. Where is this? Oh. They on tour together, so who the fuck knows? Oh, that's oh, crazy. Oh, well, I, like, I just like when you do his little legs like that. I never thought of doing that. <laughs> yeah, all you got to do that. All my years of grinding, I was all hips and pelvic. Nah, you got to do that. If I would have been feet. doing the legs, ooh, ooh. Go sexy. Ooh, ooh, thank you. What is the song? Go sexy. Get it sexy. Or get it sexy. Get it sexy. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know what song oh, that is. Oh, 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 oh. Taylor. So, she just, just had a one. kid, right? No, yeah. sexy red grown. Oh, no, she just she had a kid? Had yeah, a kid. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She got a couple of kids. But like, wow, she's back in shape so fast from that. Mm -hmm. Amazing recovery. It's called Snapback. Yeah, she is What's this last back. one? Get the oils? That's what I showed you earlier. With the, Oh, Diddy? Yeah. Let's play, play that DC Young Fly clip, man. Yeah, that's gonna make you cry, man. It's not gonna make you cry. No, I said it did make me cry. Oh. DC Young Fly with that rich homie Quan funeral. <laughs> but how you moving, mom? 
is how we supposed to move during these times. Because all the morals and the doctrines, this is the only time that we really apply it. When we hurt Job, everybody go read the book of Job. Just read the book of Job. He took everything from Job. He snatched everything from Job. And Job, like every Christian, you know, everybody like, you know, I put so much good into the world. Why? So much bad coming to me. He's like, you know what? I ain't really been bad to nobody. I just want to talk to him. I want to ask him why. Why he doing this to me? God looked at him and said, who are you talking to? Why not you? This is the time for you to praise my name. This is the time for you to tell the other people through the Mr. Pain. I'm the one that's giving you the strength, fool. <laughs> so when people think you crazy, Ma, you ain't crazy. You being obedient. And I'm here to tell the family, big bro, so it's time to be obedient. It's time to take charge. Because I know the Twilight Zone is real. But guess what? It's real. It's this is the real. And I understand the pain. This is a familiar pain. And I'm here to tell you as a soldier, I'm scrapped up with you. I'm ready to fight with you. You understand? So continue to be a leader to the family. Listen, it ain't over with, y'all. It ain't over with. He did what he was supposed to do. We all on borrowed time. Nobody in here know how they going to leave. But when you leave and we meet our maker, we want to make sure, hey, wasn't I obedient? Didn't I do the best I could? So we're going to keep his name alive, and I want to tell the family, I love y'all, and I'm here with you forever. Keep God first, everybody. Quan, I love you, big bro. You a legend. Man, salute to DC Young Fly, man. Everything he said is absolutely 100% Beautiful. correct. Beautiful. Because, you know, we always say that saying, uh, things don't happen... Uh, to you, they happen for you. Mm. It's hard to accept that when it's somebody that you love and they're Passing, no longer yeah. here. But I mean, it's part of it, right? Like, like part of death is life. And it's also, you know, in these moments, I think that's what he was trying to say with the story of Job. It's like in these moments, this is where you need to rely on God the most. One hundred percent. This is not your time to turn your back on God. God is going to be the one to lift you up during these dark times. But he's so talented, DC yeah. Young Fly. DC man. can do it all. He's man. really so talented. He, he can do it all, and it's just so fun to watch because it's just like we all used to watch him on he got Instagram. It. He got it. He got, he got it. it. He got the thing. He got the certain genesis. He, he got it. He got and it. ain't nothing you can do about it. He There's got plenty it. of people online that come from his era mm -hmm. that were doing skits and vines and sketches and all of that stuff. It just didn't happen for them. They had a little spark when it started. But to keep it going, to be able to take that energy that we saw on Instagram and take it to the world, take it to the stage, take it to TV, take it to movies, you, that shit is in you, bro. Yeah. That shit is in you. Okay. It, ain't, it ain't on your Instagram. It's in you. In you. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's DC Young Fly. He got it. Shout out to the whole 85 South Show. You can listen to the 85 South Show on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. <laughs> what else we got, Taylor? Oh, you know what? Um, it was your, the guy you gave during the day too. That said nigga. This is the editor in chief of National Review, uh, National Review, Richard Lowry. He's on Megyn Kelly's show. And I don't want to tell people what he was accused of. I just want you to hear it because sometimes, you know, they'll tell us what we're supposed to hear and you can't help but hear it. But let's, let's listen, Taylor. Play Rich Lowry. He says by drawing attention to what's happening on the right. It's just... Right. The, as the so slide goes online, was, you don't hate me enough. Go ahead. I loved, I think it was in, in that interview where Dana Bash says, you know, the police have gone through 11 months of recordings of calls, and they've only found two Springfield residents calling to complain about Haitian nigger, uh, migrants taking geese. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get that one back. I got to get that one You back. wouldn't want to hear it again. I got to hear that one again. I got to hear that one again. I got to hear that one again. What did you hear? Smooth, too. <laughs> what? He said he was trying to say the word migrant. And he, 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 that's what he <laughs> sounded like he said another word. Let me hear it, Taylor. Right, hold on. No, there's got to be like a Twitter version. Yeah, there you go. I think it was in, in that interview where Dana Bash says, you know, the police have gone through 11 months of recordings of calls, and they've only found two field representatives calling 
to complain about Haitian nigger. <laughs> nah, that's got to be edited. That's got to be edited. <laughs> no, you got to say, you got to say your phone was hacked. He said, <laughs> I'll be like, yo, my phone was hacked. He I said he was trying that. to say migrants. Huh? He said he was trying yeah, to say migrants. Yeah, we know migrants. what he was trying to say, Charlamagne. But here's the thing. There's a lot of ways. Golly. To, there's a lot of ways to get to N Wordville. Migrant ain't one of them. You can get to N Wordville if you say nickel. You can can I be the, honest with you? I don't even want to continue talking right now because <laughs> them Haitians put voodoo on them to make them say the N word. Yeah, you can, you that can was get, Haitian voodoo. You can get the N word bill saying nickel. Yo, the N word bill saying I need you. Say to nickel you put it in my head, Charlemagne. You can say nickel wagra. Stop it. You're a nickel. Nick Stop. You're a knickerbocker. No. You can get, <laughs> don't put it in my brain. You can get there from saying knick knack. I'm okay. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Everybody stop. This is this is Listen. what you guys do to us. You make us say it. Why is this so Shut funny up. to you? Don't say that. I mean, you're just so full of shits and giggles. Why? <laughs> this is Why is this tickling you so much? <laughs> Why? Bro, Why? I am I am shitting and giggling right now, bro. It, this is just too funny. I'm just shitting and giggling, bro. Listen. Nah, dude, that's he just dropped a full M bomb. But his excuse was terrible. He what did like, he say? I was trying to say migrants. He said I was trying to say migrants with a short eye. I never even heard of that shit before. You ever heard of that, Chris? <laughs> you the writer here, huh? Short eye. I don't know. He said he said he said Im he said immigrants is a long eye, migrants is a short eye, and he was trying to say it with a short eye. I don't know. What's and going it on. took him to knick knack, patty whack, <laughs> give him white a bone. Nah, he said uh, he's a. Uh, yeah, he just dropped that M bomb, bro. That, that was is crazy. Just, that's crazy. That was bro. crazy. That's so. What do you think? What do you? What is that? Do you give him a pass? <laughs> now, pass. I mean, isn't that what the fuck? I mean, that you can do. Here's the thing. I use cracker. Okay. So, you know, that's that's how I retaliate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't, yeah but it, it don't hit the same. It though. doesn't hit the same. For all the cool things black people have invented, they haven't really found a way to describe white people. Let me tell you something. Mayonnaise what? hits too. No, I'm gonna tell you. Mine hit. When I'm on the yeah. radio, when you did, mayonnaise how many had a moment. How many mayonnaise had a yo, moment. Yo, if you hear the one day back in the day, you nah, used to mayonnaise be had a moment, but it's done now. What about yeah, pasty? I'm, I'm, nah, 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 nah. No. Nothing hits like that M bomb. No, nah, I'm gonna tell you what hits. I'm telling you what. Trump supporter. <laughs> nah, <I'm> like, <laughs> nothing. Like Karen. Cracker hits, bro. Yeah, if you call him a racist, that hits. Nah, cracker is nothing. You can't like, just say racist though. You gotta say. You gotta say something that. Makes them sound racist, or like accuse them of something, but not say it's racist. Racist only works against uh, liberals. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Conservatives are so used to being called racist that they're desensitized to it. They're like, "All right, this is just part of liberal race." So why playbook. do they freak out when they own liberal television? I'm telling you, the racist shit is played out with the with the conservative whites. It just doesn't affect them in the same way. I don't know. No, white girls, they don't like that shit. They might not be conservative. The liberal young white girls, yes, because they don't really, they really care about she how they're young. perceived in the world. Say again? She wasn't young. I think no, Cracker still hits, bro. Oh. What about Snowflake? Yo, conservatives don't like no. snowflakes. They don't like, they don't they like, don't like snowflake. Yeah. No. yeah. What about crack ass snowflake? <laughs> snowflake ass cracker? Yep. Nah, it's gotta be like, <laughs> it's gotta be something that, yeah, you need a different one for liberals and a different one for conservatives. There's not one blanket that you could just say to all whites that they're upset about. Liberals don't like being called cowards. I realize that. Nah, that's not true. Well, at least the politicians don't. Yeah, just one. The Chuck Schumer, just one. <laughs> oh, no, not just him. The politicians do not like being called cowards. But I will say, I got to get him credit. Pull up what Joe Rogan said about Kamala. But I got to get him credit. Yeah. They've been showing a lot of courage. Pushing Joe out the way took a lot of balls, bro. I don't give a fuck. And they've been kind of showing a lot of courage since. Uh, it's, it's, it's been hard to call them cowards the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. It's been hard. I haven't seen anything cowardly. You know, yeah. they, they, they really taking it. Takes courage to stage a coup and remove a sitting president. I agree. Listen. <laughs> yeah. Is this one? Uh, yes. Turn that one up. Shout out to salute to Joe Rogan. How old is Rogan? I like. Rogan? I like that Rogan gets a salute when he says this. When I say that, you go, "Oh, you switching sides? <laughs> oh, here you go. That's right. Oh, you switching sides? I see. Don't Joe choose Rogan's up now. Joe Rogan's not on the pod. It's not so funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me. Let me hear. 
<laughs> whoever's helping her, whoever's coaching her, yeah. whoever's the puppet master running the strings, yeah, you did a fucking amazing job. She did a good job. They did an amazing job from the moment Biden drops out, forcing Biden to drop out. <laughs> right, whatever they're doing, whoever's writing those speeches, getting yeah. her to deliver them, coaching her, yeah. she's nailing it. She nailed that one speech. She's like, say it to my face. Oh, yeah. It was cheer. Yeah, that, she nailed it, dude. And then last night, to me, when I was like, oh my God, this is jujitsu, where she's like, if you go to his rallies, his crowds are boring. They're tired. They're they all leave the room. My crowds are the best crowds. Yeah, I have yeah. the number one yeah. crowd. He couldn't help himself. And she got him. She oh, baited him on that. She 100%, walked him right 100%, in. 100%. 100%. See the difference in that debate. I hate this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I, when I literally said that That's shit, to Rogan, man. <laughs> <laughs> let Rogan cook, yo. Don't let. It. <laughs> and even when it came to answering tough questions, instead of answering, she would just say things that she believed. Yes, sure. And they sounded real good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that's the soundbite. That's called being a savvy politician. It's also called being someone who's working with a team mm -hmm. versus someone who's like, I mean, they okay. said Trump that deal. He sounds just like this deal. They've never seen a deal like this before. They said, how did you put that deal together? People say that was just brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's like that's the he he's not working with a team that's like I mean, I know he's doing like mock debates. I know he did one with I think he did yeah. one with Tulsi Gabbard, but someone needs to like tell him like you've got these tiny little windows and you should have all the words ready for those windows. He started out no repeating things. Yeah. He started out Okay, listen. First of all, amazing take, Rogan. I salute <laughs> that, that guy. I'm glad to hear Rogan Charlie say this. I hate you. But I want to say, <laughs> I hate you. If you watch heart. Joe Rogan, this shouldn't surprise you because this is why people like Rogan. I think this is why people like us. Yeah, we're, we're objective, objective about it. You're like, a democratic operative, but outside of that, yes, we're objective. But I can still be critical of them yeah. as an operative, as yeah. a shill, yeah. right? <laughs> I can still be critical of them. I'm not going to lie yes. to people about them. Absolutely. He's not lying about what he saw. And um, I will say... It's a good... It's an honest take. That is what happened. I did two things I disagree with, though. Okay. Uh, and one is not really a disagreement. It's just a, a, a statement. What we're seeing from the vice president now is who she is. This is what I've been trying to tell people. This is why I got frustrated the last three and a half years because I, ex I, expect I expected somebody of her stature and her talent to not succumb to the VP role. I know the VP role, you got to play a certain position, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's better to be seen and, and, and not heard. But I just expected more of her because I voted for her. I didn't. I never voted for Joe Biden. I voted for her because she was on the ticket. That's who I was voting for. Mm -hmm. So what you're seeing, like he's saying the team and everything, yes, she has a team, but this is really her. And guess what? She's really not even loose yet. Joe said something. Joe said he's nailed the speeches. The speeches is something that's kind of frustrating me a little bit because she's saying the same thing over and over and over and over. It's like a set. Mm. Like comedians have a set. Yeah. And... They have a set too, but you can't really do that in 2024 because we see too much of each. We see too much of them. Mm -hmm. So how did you're gonna say she could get more loose? Like how yes. would she get more loose? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yes, she should be on. She, she needs to be, even get a bottle of baby you know, oil anymore. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> get a bottle of baby oil. I know, and it's sold out everywhere. Please sold out. You know what she should do? You know, you know what she should do? She should do Rogan. Oh. And I've already suggested that she that should be fire. do Rogan. That would be crazy. Vice President Kamala Harris should do Rogan. Like, it, it, it'll be a great conversation. I know Joe Rogan and Kamala Harris will have a great conversation. 50 million views easily on YouTube. Easily. That'd be fire. I, 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 I want it to I happen. I think they both should do it. I think both presidents should go on the biggest platform in the country and then speak to the people. I think that's a smart thing to do. When in history have they not done that? I don't think there's been a time in history where both presidents didn't go on the biggest platform. Well, I guess the last election, but before that, like ever before Joe became the biggest platform, the presidents went to NBC, ABC. They yeah. went and they spoke in front of the world. I agree. I think it would be like, for example, I'd like to see the vice president on Rogan and Trump do something like Breakfast Club. Oh, you're saying... You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah. you kind of expect... You know, you know the, I want to see you both on both. Yeah. 
God, did he? Damn. God damn. Pete. Is it a freak off or not? <laughs> is it a freak off or not? Are we having a freak off or not? Freak off. That's what that's okay. what needs to happen. That's what America's built on. <laughs> America's built on, on freak, freak off. Offs. By the way, there might be something to that. Of course there's something oh to that. Oh my God. Everybody just come in the room and let's just have one big fucking orgy. What do you think Thanksgiving was about? <laughs> stuffing that turkey? Wow. <laughs> Why do you think they were stuffing and that turkey? And the first one was multicultural. Facts. It was pilgrims. What? <laughs> what? I did not say that. What I did not say did that. Say? I did not Yo, say that. Alex, did you hear what he said? <laughs> this said, guy is shooting from the hip this I said, week. facts. You are, let's pay some bills and do some African <laughs> What the fuck is this, man? Everybody keeps sending me this. Let me listen to this real quick, man. You did the Diddy thing? Yeah. Plus one. Party, and I don't really Five. remember what I was saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Would you like a reminder? Yeah, yeah sure. Play some. Play, play, hey, yo, play listen, some. yo, I, I love it all. I love it all, man. I like yeah. when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, when you put my bag daddy, I like when you oh, when you scrambling and scraping some shit. Um, that was you. That was you. Scrambling. <laughs> <laughs> what? You said I like when you do it like that, Daddy. When you scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Oh, God. Squarespace. Uh, thanks again to Squarespace for supporting this week's episode of Brilliant Idiots. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all on your terms. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. Tailor to your brand or business and optimize for every device. Device. Easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated, optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. With Fluid Engine, the next generation website editor from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Choose your website starting point and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. Stretch your imagination online with Fluid Engine, included in any new Squarespace site. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's do some asking idiots, T. Diddy. I gotta go. Damn. <laughs> I did, I gotta go. Yo, just a couple, a couple of ask idiots. Just a couple of ask idiots. Uh, you gotta leave right now? It's only 3.05. There's traffic, though. Where well, you gotta go? Gotta go to the Bronx. The Bronx? Uh-oh. What's uh, in the... Uh, God you know, damn. You know. What? You're going back to the food shelter? All right, ready, shelter? let's go. You got to get that cheap... Um... The food shelter, right? <laughs> Yo. I'm about to walk in that lobby and listen to Usher play. What? There goes my baby. baby. Flush. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, A let's go. Okay. Uh, AV, XBR.392. What's the most unexpected lesson you've learned from your podcasting journey? Great question, Schultz. What's most the most unexpected lesson I've learned from my podcast and journey? Um, God, I don't know. That's a good one. I mean, I just learned a lot of shit. I'm trying to think. Unexpected? I honestly don't know. Uh, I think for me, the most unexpected lesson is that uh, words, words do stand the test of time. Ooh. Meaning that everything we're saying right now, five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, people will still hold us to that. Mm. And I don't know if they should. Um, I remember having a conversation with Malcolm Gladwell once, and I love all Malcolm Gladwell's books. But I remember when he put out his, I don't, I don't remember what book it was. What was the, what was the last books he put out? Um was it Blink? What was the last book he put out, Chris? No, he had one after Blink. Uh, the one that was about Sandra Bland. I can't think of the title right now. It, it was rooted about Sandra Bland. But I, can't, I can't remember. Whatever his one of his latest books was, um, I just remember talking to him about... What was it? That the was, Bomber Mafia? No. no. <clears throat> I can't remember. But I just remember him saying that a lot of stuff he wrote in his earlier books, he doesn't necessarily believe anymore right mm. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here but it was something along those lines and i was like no don't tell me that but 
what he's saying, it makes sense. If you're constantly growing and you're learning, and you're gaining new information, what you wrote in Outliers or what you wrote in Tipping Point may not apply for you, to you anymore, yeah. but people are in different places in their journey. Friends with the Tipping Point? Was it? I don't remember. Saying 2024. It's all good. I, I don't remember. But my, my David and Goliath, I think it was. No, it couldn't have been David and Goliath. What? It? I don't remember. But my point is, if if you you hold us if you hold us accountable for things we said ten years ago, mm. fifteen years ago, mm -hmm. that's not fair to the men we are now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you listen to this shit, who's going back ten years to find something you said? It depends how successful you get. Well, that's the thing. Like they're not. <laughs> keep, they, they, you keep getting more and more successful. Yeah. They're gonna do that. But that. But I guess to me, I'm like, well, what is the impetus of that? Like, why? Why are people doing that? Why are they? Why are they trying to go back into your history? Because you're successful. No, no, no. I understand that. So, like, if the goal in that situation is to go through your tweets or go through the old episodes, radio shows that you did, just to remove an opportunity that you've really worked hard for, then I think that that person is going to have to deal with that karma. I don't think that you're dealing with the karma with what oh, you no, said. No, no. I'm good. Listen, we're good. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying like that. It was an unexpected lesson because it literally, I, I never thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. Like I almost thought of, of, of what we do on radio and podcasting like Snapchat. Yeah, it's like it disappears. It after disappears. A you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I didn't realize, like, oh, this shit is a book, huh? Y'all, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like y'all really going back, you know, subscribing to this shit, and it's like we've always made jokes, we've always been satire. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We've always told you, trust us, we're lying. Yeah. We've always told you, you should believe us, even though we're lying. Yeah. Like we're here to entertain. So it's just, um, it's it, that that was an unexpected lesson, and that's why I'm very intentional now about being in this present moment. And with my words. So if I tell you suck my dick right now. That's what you mean. I absolutely mean it. And I stand on that. <laughs> um, Hassan underscore says, you learn that the world is ending on Sunday. What are the things you would do to prepare? I go to Taylor Swift, wherever she is. <laughs> mm. I would watch that final Taylor Swift concert because, you know, that shit is going to be fire. You think Taylor would still be giving concerts? Oh, yeah. You think Taylor, would, if Taylor knew the world was ending Sunday, how oh, arrogant yeah. would you be? How arrogant are you that you know the world is ending Sunday so you decide to have a concert? You need to give it to the people. It's not arrogant. It's a gift you're giving to the people. They need one more great concert from the greatest artists of all time before <laughs> we all die. Like, don't you think that that's the right kind thing to do? I'm just going to spend as much time with my family as possible. I'm taking my family to Taylor Swift. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going by myself? No, they want to experience greatness as well before they get out of here. That would be wild. You think your your family want to hang out with you on the last but, day? By the way, if they've every, been hanging out with you every single by the way, if day. Everybody, tired of that shit. If everybody knew the world was ended on Sunday, I wouldn't leave the fucking house. This shit would be like a purge. Yeah. This Why shit would, would be like a kill ditty each party. Other? Why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it should be like a motherfucking They need to party, do another bro. purge but based on a Diddy party, bro. <laughs> they need to do a Diddy freak off purge movie immediately. That movie? Oh my God. Oh my God. Dude, Daddy Butter is one of the most disgusting things that's ever been mentioned. Great Tubi on this movie. Name, Daddy Butter? Daddy Butter is a great Tubi movie. Name. Yo, shout out Tubi, man. That's going to be the name of this podcast Daddy Butter. Daddy Butter. Butter. <laughs> uh, scroll up, Taylor. Morfield Jr., Andrew, dream role to play in a movie if presented. Man, Oceans, uh, if they if they do the Oceans movies, mm. if they do like more Oceans movies, like Oceans 11, 12, 13, like You got that a young Clooney be, vibe to you. I would, that would be the dream for sure. That would be the dream for sure. Eon Laffey says. <laughs> Would you rather lose your sight, bro? This is or a have funny everyone question to ask whoever me. knows you forget everything. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a funny question to ask Sean Combs right now. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> you don't need sight because he fucks everything. So I feel like that would be the one that he would let go. A, a hole's a hole. Yeah. But to make everybody forget every memory of you. <laughs> Yo, that is sad. You got to build new friendships all over again. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like this question because I don't want either one. Yeah. Nah, well, that's I'm, why I'm, it's a hypothetical. That's, that's right. how that works. <laughs> <laughs> what are your hypotheticals? Have everyone who ever knows you. Do you want to die or get $100? So that means your wife, listen, your wife don't know you. Your kids don't know you. Like, nah, bro, bro. Nah, bro. Hey, I got one better for you. You didn't give me a C, but I'll give you one. 
I'll suck my own dick. Um, Nasha Rama says, one thing about fatherhood, you tell everyone to watch out for. Nobody even asked him, bro. I know. I thought nobody even asked him. I thought words are nobody intentional. Even, <laughs> nobody even was curious. Nobody even wanted to know if he would do that. Sorry. He just said shit that he, he wants to do that. He just said words are intentional. Yeah, like, he's like, whatever you say on this pod will haunt yeah. you for years to come. <laughs> this guy is crazy. Nobody asked you if you would suck your own dick. <laughs> Listen, Nasha Rama. Yo, Nasha Rama says one thing about that's fatherhood. Crazy, bro. You tell everyone to watch out for. What you think, Schultz? What? One <laughs> thing about fatherhood, you tell everyone to watch out for. You turn gay as fuck after your fourth daughter? That's a fact. <laughs> you have four daughters, they gay creep out. Yo, <laughs> you just said you wanted to go gurt yourself. You think Diddy can get a lube endorsement after this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go great. KY. So funny. <laughs> stupid. KY. When it's in the right hand, it's for the pink. When it's in the left hand, it's for the stink. KY. <laughs> That's <was> pretty good. <laughs> That's <was> pretty good. <laughs> uh, but what is one thing about fatherhood you tell everyone to watch out for, Schultz? Um, God. What is the honest? The, the honest thing? Yes. About fatherhood? Uh, hmm. Expect the unexpected. Yeah, I mean... Don't, 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 don't think about it too hard. Meaning, like, there's no blueprint for it. There's yeah. no plan. You can yeah. talk to your dad. You can talk to your mom. You can talk to other fathers. Mm -hmm. You can talk to other mothers. Everybody's experience is different. How fast it moves, that's what I was yeah, saying. Yeah, man. Like, every week, something is going to change, and that last week, you'll never have back again. So embrace every single week. That's right. Like, there's a period where they just sleep on you, and then that period stops. Like, embrace every single week. That That is unexpected. Listen, I agree with you, and... um, Oh, damn, I just lost my train of thought because my daughter texted me just now as we was talking. What she said? Uh, she thinks I'm home, which is crazy. Um, yes, to everything you just said. Right? I had a fire thought to go with that, and it slipped my mind just that fast. What did you say? Maybe something to trigger me back to remember? That, like, um, I don't remember what we were talking about either. <laughs> Shit. Oh, no, that it just moves so fast. It just moves so fast. Like, being a parent, that's the most unexpected thing. You think you're going to have all this time in all these different stages. Like, the yes. stage where they can't crawl. Yes. Is so quick. And then once they can crawl, they are on the move. Yes. They, they don't stop. Like Yes. And what you just said reminded me of why I do not understand deadbeats. Mm. I do not understand a person who is not in their child's life every moment of it. Like, I want to be in the house. Because yeah. to your point, it moves so fast. Like... If you don't see your child for a month, you don't see your child for a couple months, that person, he's a, they're a different person. Yeah. Especially when they're young and their developmental stages. Like, I need to be there. I'm a, I got to micromanage mine. I got to be on top of all of mine every single day. Like, you start to see new birth, all types of stuff. Yeah. They learn new words. They learn. Every day, these kids are learning something new. I do not understand anybody who is not in their child's life 24 7. I get it if you and the mother didn't work out. You know, and and you know, the, the the mother might be keeping you away from the child. But if you're purposely not trying to be in your child's life every moment of the day, that's just some uh, some legendary sucker shit. Mm. Because you are missing out on so goddamn much. Yeah. Um. Let's end with this one because this is when I tell you that this is top tier brilliant idiots. This is why our listeners are the best. This is why we're both so ridiculous because of y'all. This is an amazing question. Louis Barra Jasko says, if you could rework the penis, what would you do and what features would you add? Oh, man. I mean, I obviously like control to orgasm. Like if there was some sort of switch you could put off or like a gate, like a... One step? Say again? You want multiple? I don't want multiple because there's more chances of getting the wrong girl pregnant. I want to be able to shut it down so that I can nut when I want to nut. Did you listen to what the fuck you just said? What? <laughs> you said more chances of getting the wrong girl pregnant. You married. You only got one girl. I'm saying before. Oh, okay. Just making sure. Yeah, God, I want to bust damn. multiple nuts. I just want to shut it down and then just 
you know, she could orgasm. You want to be able to program it, like, yo, give me, I need a hot forty five. Hot like, forty five. Yeah, or yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. or just like a button or something like that, that, like makes you not nut. You know, like a topper, like a. No, you, we need you to nut. You can't do that. No, no, no but once after, don't you want to nut first? Yeah, I guess. You don't really care about that. No, no, no. Well, yeah, because y'all <laughs> not gonna have much orgasm. My bad. So yeah. He basically said he want to put his dick on a timer, Taylor. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not even on a timer. I don't want a timer. I just want to, all right, once you nut, then I'll nut. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, need yeah. a nut. How many times? Once. She only gets one time? Well, how many times do I get to nut? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all hate equality. I know, that's great. <laughs> Yo, is that out here with no orgasms, not getting none, and you mad about getting one? One is enough. Yeah. Ooh. I uh, want an extendo. You want more dick? Yeah. What do you want to do with all of it? it? I don't want that much more. I got a, a good bit. I just want to be able to, like, if you want to, like, you know, if I could rework it, I could rework it to make it any size I want. At least, like, you know, not any size, but Give me up to an 11 range. Why do you need 11 such... 11 is... You're crazy. Yeah, what is that that you... What are you trying to achieve with that? Because I don't want to go blind. And, and I don't want to forget have people forget my memory. So I got to be able to suck my own dick. So I need it to be long enough yeah. <laughs> to do it. You know, end the podcast. <laughs> end the podcast. As right always. Now. I'd make it vibrate. Oh, make it vibrate. Mm. That's fire. You could, I'd, I'd do that. Hmm? You can make your dick vibrate. How? Oh. There's Just, toys you could put in. No, you could do it yourself with your own body. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it right now. Yeah, you just go like this. <laughs> I'm doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now end the podcast. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Seriously, uh-uh. clench your jaw. <laughs> hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, I'm going to join you. I'm going to make mine vibrate, too. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to make mine vibrate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stalling so he can get whatever he needs. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't find it. You know what? God don't want me to be an asshole. That's all this Just is. do it. Oh, here you go. <laughs> Yo, Diddy's wild, bro. You ready? Let's do it. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Thanks.